Hello everyone. For those that were watching the live stream, I really apologize for the second portion of that where I start talking about vehicles and start talking about uh, creating characters at random. Um, I hope to make these two videos to address um, that issue. So this one I'll be talking about video or <laughs> I'll be talking about vehicles. All right. So uh, creating a vehicle within Unreal is a little bit uh, tricky because it has to be a very specific way that you import the model. So I'm using 3ds Max. So this is my uh, car model over here. Um, I actually imported this from TurboSquid. Really nice website for downloading 3D models and whatnot. So um, all I did here was decimate some of the uh, some of the things so that it wasn't as um, taxing by reducing the polygon count. And really, what you need to make sure is that the car is aligned X moving forward this way, um, Y is to the left-hand side, and Z is up. I know for those that may be using Maya, the Y and Z directions are flipped, but you need to really be careful with the orientation with this. Otherwise, uh, Unreal will just think that your car is, like, for example, this way, and your wheels will get all funky. So, um... It's not so much only to do that, but another thing that you need to do is make sure that when you go to um, this part here, to the pivot only section, that your pivots are um, aligned the exact same way as the car is aligned in the world. Uh, if it's not aligned that way, what you can do is go to the reset X form, select that, um, go to the hierarchy tree, go to effect pivot only, make sure that it's centered to the object, and then go over here and click Reset Selected. Uh, when that happens, inside the Modify tab, you'll see this little X form over here with your new um, pivot alignment to the world. Then you just uh, right-click and click Collapse All to set that new pivot to where it is. Um, yeah, so you can do uh, effect pivot only and align to world, which will really make sure that it's that. But you need to do that for every single component. So the components of the car are made up of the car's body, and all of the wheels are separate. Now, I actually, or this car here, does not have a bone structure. However, it is in a hierarchy, saying that this is. Um, over all of the wheels, and the wheels are considered children. So when it's imported into Unreal using FBX, um, Unreal just kind of puts the bones in place. I do this by going to the schematic view over here, where um, you have, you may have all of this. Uh, actually, let's see if I can just unlink all of this. Okay, so you'll have it initially like this, and all you really need to do, these are all mesh components, none of them are bones, just uh, click on link, or connect, over here, and then drag from the child class to the parent class, and that will happen. So you just go ahead and stick all the wheels underneath the car, and once you do that, this will all be parented properly, and then just go ahead and export how you usually export. Um, through FPX. So it comes to over here, or actually over here. Alright, so this is my car skeletal mesh. It should come in just like this. Um, and to make sure that your, um, that all of the skeleton is rigged properly, just go ahead and look at these to make sure that, you know, the, the bones are well, the newly created bones within Unreal are set properly. So the next thing you need to do is go to the car physics asset, which should automatically be imported in. However, you need to modify a couple things. Uh, number one, <clears throat> you need to make sure that the wheels are spheres. So really, what you should do is just select everything and delete collision and um, then go one by one. So like the front wheel, 
select new body, make it a sphere. Uh, all the rest are okay. And you need to make sure that the sphere is aligned with the size of the wheel. So go ahead and do that for the rest. Oops, I messed up. I did not put sphere. So new body, sphere, okay. So you have this. And then for the uh, main body of the car, I've decided to just um, use like a um, like a multi-convex hull. And that just allows me to uh, have just like a finer collision upon impact. Another thing that you could do is just put a normal box component, or it really depends on what type of car, or really the shape of your car. So I just did something like this, so the collisions of the car is somewhat close. So once you have the collisions all set up, when you click simulate, it should just kind of stay there, if you did it right. Um, <clears throat> the next step, after you set up the collisions properly and you save, Okay. The next step is to go to, or is to, well, actually create your actors. So <clears throat> inside cars over here we have a couple components. One of them is called a tire asset, um, which is just a data asset. So if you right click, go to um, experimental, mm, sorry, miscellaneous and then data asset over here. This one just contains one value, which is called friction scale, and that's just set to one in this case. And then you need to create your front wheel and back wheel properties, which is under the class um, vehicle wheel, as you can see in the parent class section. To do that, just right click, go to blueprint class, and then just start typing wheel, and you'll see vehicle wheel. These ones I created, so you won't see those, but you'll see vehicle wheel. Select those, and you'll just come up with this over here. Now what this does is define the properties of your wheel. Um, so the shape of the wheel is pretty much a cylinder. Um, <clears throat> there's no offset in the wheel. The size, like radius-wise, is 60 for my wheel and you basically just conform these. Now the difference between having the back wheel and the front wheel is something like steering angle which only the front wheel really should have um, if you're trying to simulate a car otherwise do what you want. Uh, and the same thing with like because I'm simulating this type of car I'm affecting the handbrakes only for the back wheel. The front wheel doesn't have that. Um, that tire type is the tire data asset that we have before, which is just the friction scale of one, and the rest is has in, or has to do with like suspension, how the tires like stiffnesses and stuff like that. I just left all this by default. And after this, after you create those assets, then the two other things you need to create is your car blueprint, which, as you can see here, the parent class is wheeled vehicle. This is important actually, because if you don't use the wheeled vehicle, which is this one here, it should be underneath the pawn, then you won't have access to some of the things like acceleration and throttle and um, steering angle and stuff like that. So if you create you create that next, and in here in your viewport, you should I think already have your mesh selected which just imp or it should be already there see it's inherited so just uh, select your car that you imported <clears throat> the front hitbox I'll explain why I have this there later and also the the vehicle moment movement is also inherited so I'll go over this part first over here um, you do need to create an animation blueprint and then stick that in there but we will do that at a later time the rest of the properties doesn't, uh, I just left these at default. But vehicle movement is kind of important. If you go up over here underneath vehicle setup, you'll see your wheel setups. 
and the wheel setups, you'll have four of them, which represents your four wheels. This will be automatically generated by, based off of the mesh. Um, if not, you just click Add Elements. And then um, when you drop down one of these elements, you'll see your wheel class, which is what we were just talking about. So, for example, this particular wheel is the front wheel. Um, and then the bone, your bone name corresponds to the name of your mesh, since we're not actually using bones. Um, then, or, and the rest of these, because I have no offsets on my wheels, it's exactly centered. Um, those ones remain the same. <clears throat> and you do this for all of them. Now, the order of which these ones appear is actually the order that it is shown inside your skeleton. So front left wheel, front right wheel, uh, back right, and back left. That's 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, so as long as you follow that order and make sure that it's the same, so front left wheel, front right wheel, um, your car should be set up properly in that case. Now, that's really it for the for the car's uh, blueprint for like the wheeled vehicle. Now we need to go ahead and create the animation asset. So that is done. <clears throat> Over here, you can create an animation blueprint. Now this is a little bit tricky because one, you need to create the the animation blueprint, which you can do down here, animation and then animation blueprint, or as you notice here, the parent class is vehicle anim instance. So you can just go to blueprint class and no you can't, never mind. Alright, so create your animation blueprint in the normal way over here, blue uh animation and then animation blueprint. Then when you're in here, go to File, Reparent Blueprint, and then you'll see a bunch of animations, and you use Vehicle Anim Instance. That's important in order to get this thing right here, the Wheel Handler. Once you reparent that, your um, drop-down, when you right-click, should change in order to represent stuff for vehicles, too. So um, after you do that, just it, select this Wheel Handler over here, and connect all these together and that actually should be it for the animation blueprint then just go back and stick it inside of your actual car class by going to um, by going to car self and or sorry mesh and then importing the cars animation blueprint and that is pretty much it for car setup. If you want to test it out in the event begin play, just set up your throttle. Um, so underneath your vehicle movement here, drag that in there and click set throttle input to 1. Don't have to worry about this. That's just kind of nonsense. And that's really it for cars. Drag it into the world to make sure that everything's okay. And click play. And if it's all right, then your car should run with no problem. For if you want to see how your steering looks, um, the thing for that is set um, steering input over here. And if you select it one, it'll turn to the right. So just go ahead and try that. And you'll see that your car is now turning and it will just kind of keep doing that. Now that box that I selected here, um, this part here, is really only there for creating collisions with characters, which I was also demonstrating in the um, in the live stream. So I created a front hitbox. Well actually, first I created a, a um, socket in the front of the car over here 
um, and I just connected this is it? this front hit box, which is just a box in the components tab over here. Um, I used the parent socket front car, which is what you saw. And all this does is it says that if one of my uh, if one of my civilian characters or just like basically a some other biped character ends up touching this box to simulate ragdoll mode, which then will um, spawn ragdoll mode before the car hits it so that I can get this desired effect. Otherwise, or here it is. So I just this desired effect, which I think I was playing in oh in the live stream too. This right there. So you have kind of like a nice collision with the car. <clears throat> Anyways, um, that's really it for this um, vehicle. I know I went a little bit fast and I didn't necessarily build the vehicle in front of you, but I just wanted to um, I, I just wanted to tell you guys how to do this because I did mention this in the live stream and unfortunately the audio went bad. So thanks for watching.